Back to the angle. Two rays that come together at a vertex is an angle. Okay, but like how do you measure an angle? Okay. With a protractor, where how do you set it up? Here, I'll get a protractor. Well, oh. You can have one on there. It's gonna be cool. Start at, at zero, right? So you these bottom ones here. Mm -hmm. This is 44 degrees, uh, and not 137. That's 136 degrees. What's that? That's if you're measuring from the other side. If you're measuring from over there, then you'd measure from the left to the right. But typically, what we do is we measure starting on the right, and we measure counterclockwise. So now that we're not using that non-straight line anymore, um, like here's kind of what I'm trying to bring our attention to. If I measure the angle down here, is it different from measuring it up here? No. 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 So it doesn't really have to do with anything with distance, right? An angle is not a measure of distance. How would you describe how we, like, <coughs> what is it? Like, some angles are bigger. How are they bigger? Yeah? Is this where we're going to use that big circle thing? Yeah. 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 Big circle. Yeah. Told you why I saved mine from last year. Mm. Oh, yeah. it's just a book. Are we going to give a new one? Just Can we just answer the question? <laughs> what? What would make an angle bigger than this angle? Either, either if it was obtuse, 
It doesn't have to be obtuse to be bigger than that. <laughs> doesn't have to be obtuse to be bigger than 90. doesn't have to be bigger than 90. Um, if you want either of the lines are moved farther apart. Okay, but see how farther apart the disk is. Yeah. Wait, wait, I think it's counterclockwise. Oh, this is good. Yeah, oh. counterclockwise is not, a is not a matter of, of from here to there, but a rotation. Okay, so it's rotated counterclockwise. More, right? If this were more rotated counterclockwise, then it would be a bigger... More, answer. it's in... You can just say counterclockwise, because if you're going this way, it's clockwise. You're right. If this <laughs> side were measured, if we're <laughs> rotated counterclockwise... I'm in one of those moods, I'm sorry. I'm like, that's okay. That's okay. Uh, if this black side were, were rotated counterclockwise, then yeah. If this red side were uh, rotated clockwise, it would be... So it's about rotation. An angle is, is like a piece of a rotation. Okay. Um, and just to pull out some vocab, uh, this side is called the initial side. Why is it called the initial side? Because it's the first where it's um, initial. Yeah, you would start there initially. <laughs> <laughs> and this side would be called the, do you guys know what this is called? Terminal, the terminal side. Gigi? So you initiate your measurement here, you terminate your measurement there, initial and terminal side. Um, so we said it's how many degrees? Forty? Four. Four degrees? Four. So we know what degree you are, right? Like how big would you say that? Fifteen? Twenty-two. Fifteen? Twenty-two? Maybe twenty? This angle. 120. We're just guesses, right? We haven't measured them really accurately, but we do have an idea. Like we know this is 90 and past that, 120 is not a bad guess. See how close we are? Why would you take a picture? Because then people will be like, you just drew it on there afterwards. And they'll well, he wasn't alive. This is for our time. Let's just hold it in our hands. 22. 22? Somebody said 22. Oh, wow. Who said 20? They saw it. I said 20. Oh. <laughs> So since we already know about degrees, we're going to talk about radians and more than just know where they are on the unit circle, we want to have more of an understanding. So we're going to take it to the next level in this year. Have an understanding of what radians are and why we would move away from degrees and go into radians. So degrees are just the leftover hundreds, maybe thousands of years ago uh, from the space 60 civilizations of the Babylonians. So the Greeks come along and they say, Get that. Let's let's make this a little easier, especially when we think about um, a circle. And what's this called on a circle? Radius. Radius. What's this called? A diameter. What's this called? The circumference, right? You measure all the way around and have the circumference. How do we find the circumference? Pi times r. Gotta be times r, right? Because it can't just be two pi, it's gotta be dependent on how big the circle is. Bigger circle, bigger circumference. So two pi would be how much circumference you have for a radius of one and other uh, for other radii multiplied by radius. Um, but what about if we don't have the whole circumference, if we have just pieces of a circumference, like half of the circumference? How would we, that's called an arc, a piece of the circumference, a piece of specifically a circular curve is called an arc. Uh, so if we have half the circumference, then what do we have on this side? 
Just two pi r, because right when we take two pi, we divide it by two, multiply by r, that comes out and simplifies to pi r, right? But we just we divided it by two. Okay. R stays constant, this changes. <coughs> r is this constant, the circle is still the radius r, whether we're gonna go all the way around the circle, halfway around the circle, the radius is the same. We, this is a way of kind of giving a, a portion of the rotation. What if we have um, It's a way of saying we're this far around the circle. As we take less of the circumference, or different fractions of the <coughs> circumference, this part of the equation changes. It's a way of saying we are this far around the circle. If we say we're three pi four, or we're at three pi over four, we're at three eighths around the whole circle. Yes. How come uh, the rate, like r in the equation is just by itself? It's not divided. No, because uh, if like for let's say circumference divided by four, wouldn't you divide by the entire thing by four on the other side? Yeah, but when we take two pi r divided by four, uh -huh. can we just do four divided by or two and four yeah. into each other, and then we just get pi over two times r? It could be, or it could. It, it doesn't really have to be. It would if it was like pi plus r, then that would be a big deal. But if we leave this as r, if we, whether we leave it as two separate things or we put it together and multiply them together, we either have pi over two times r, or we have pi r over two. Okay. Be the same as uh, two times a half, or two divided by two. It's all the same. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It's just like two fractions multiplied together. So. From this, from trying to take pieces of the circumference, um, comes this idea of, well, instead of saying we're at 16 degrees and then trying to figure out how much of the circle that is and then multiplying that by the equation uh, 2 pi r, we'll just say, well, we'll just say we're this far around the circle, we'll divide 2 pi by that, by that amount, and there you go, that's what we're going to call radius rather than trying to bring degrees into it. We just leave it uh, as a, like a fraction of 2 pi. So if 2 pi r gives us the full rotation, the full circumference, then we'll call the full circumference, or the full rotation, how many radians? 2 pi. 2 pi is all the way around. Right? And then if we go halfway around, right? Half of that full rotation that brings us to how many radians? One pi radians. And if we go a fourth of the way around the circle, that's a fourth of the way around two pi. We simplify it down. It's pi over two radians. No, no, no. Once you get, we don't talk about the unit circle until. For just the radian measures, you have, as Michael pointed out, on the inside cover, you have a circle that tells you degrees and radians. 
Actually, that's the full unit circle. It has everything. this a fraction of the way to pi. How far does it look like it is? One fourth. One fourth, right? So it's pi divided by four. Pi over four. Okay. So what you're looking at your results to get? Don't rely on your vague understanding from last year. Let's make it all better. So if that's pi over four, then what would that be? Should be like a fourth as well. Five fourths. We got one fourth, two fourths, three fourths, four fourths, five fourths. Five fourths of pi, five pi over four. And, uh, this one. This one I'll say is a sixth of the way to pi, so it's pi over six. So if this is a sixth away, then. Five pi over six. This would be six pi over six, which simplified to, simplify to five. So this would be one pi over six away. So five pi over six. <coughs> Where would uh, seven pi over three be? Uh, seven pi over three. Seven pi over three. Yeah. Where's pi over three? <coughs> the first third would be, right, this is pi over three, right? Because it's a third of pi, one third. So it'll be there again. It'll be there again. It'll be there again? Yep, yeah. One third. You go all the way around. Go all the way around. One third, two thirds, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. It does when you think about angles and how they start there and how they stop. Why are they going around? Because I like going around. Then we have a good enough play of each other. You'll be there a long time. I uh, know you will. Seven pi over four. I'll draw out a little circle and that'll help us. We'll just count out the pi over fours. Where's pi over four? Just the first pi over four. Where is it? Out of four. What? Out of, out of fourth. Yeah, fourth of pi. This is one pi over four. So we count by pi over four. One. Where would two pi over four take? In, in there. And three pi over four? In, in between. Halfway between the next one. And then four. Five, six, seven pi over four. In the fourth. So in the fourth, yes. The quadrant is the fourth. Okay, for B, take a second. Is it in? It's in the second. What's 
find out. 11 pi over 4? So then we already have 7. Okay, we already have 7. That goes to there. Oh, just kidding. 9? Wait. That's not, Wait. That's not 7. Oh, 7's you. Yeah, I got yeah. Seven. Seven. I got confused. Seven. 7, 8, eight nine, 9, 10, 10 11. That's their second. understand what that would be. That would never okay, let's start with this. This is what? Negative what? Negative pi. Negative pi. How big is pi? 3. So this is negative 3.14 radians. Okay, let's just <coughs> do some, some gross estimation here. 3.14, negative 3.14 is close to negative 3. Negative three. So negative one radian would be close to what? How would it compare to negative three? How would? So if this is approximately, let's, let's approximate this to three. So the middle line is negative one point five. So this would be about negative one point five. So negative one would be close to a third of the way there, right? So somewhere in here for sure. Okay. Quadrant four. Now let's talk about that. Um, so negative one is close to, to there. Um, how many degrees is that close to? Wait. Close to 120? From here to there? No, 60. No. To negative 60? Close to negative 60? Is it more or less than negative? Negative one radian. No, be more. More? I don't It's close to 60, but is it more than 60 or less than 60? It's less. It's less. It's less. Negative one yeah. radian is less than 60. Because actually, 60 is exactly one third of, of the way to pi, to negative pi, um, right? Yeah. But this is. Three point one four, so a third of that would be a little bit more than one, right? Yeah. So negative one radian is not quite one third of three point one four, but it's close. It's close to sixty, but it's less than sixty. So where would three radians be? Negative three radians would be where? Just under three. Just under negative pi radians. For negative six radians, same thing. All the way? All the way around? Almost all the way around. Something like that. Right? Because all the way around would be what? Negative 6.28. Yeah, negative 2 pi. Wait, the number Positive one would be right here. And then, you know, like that quadrant one? Yeah. Uh, yes. Oh, okay. Um, let's talk about number four real quick, just the first part. Negative five pi over 12. <coughs> no, 
quadrants. Right, this is all about quadrants, so it's all about where are these, where, where, how far is this? How many twelfths would this be? Right, so negative five, twelve, negative five pi over twelve. Let's see, is it this far? This would be negative what over, negative what pi over twelve? How many twelfths would this be? Twelve, right? The whole pi would be twelve pi over twelve, negative twelve pi over twelve. Right? How far would this be then? That's six pi over twelve, negative six pi over twelve. Negative five pi over twelve is going to be somewhere right there, so the quadrant started this whole discussion about uh, radians with uh, parts of the circumference. Wait. Yes? What if it's right on the... You won't have any like that if that's in which quadrant it'll be in, it'll be in like that. Oh. Between quadrants and between <coughs> quadrants. Just like zero is not positive or negative, it's right in the middle. Um, so we started out talking about uh, <coughs> radians with Parts of the circumference. A part of the circumference we already said is called arc. arc. Right? So let's talk about that word for a second. Arc is specifically a piece of a circle, a piece of the curve of a circle. Okay? So when you like toss up a basketball, you shoot a basketball, does it follow an arc? Yeah. Does it follow a circular path? Yeah. What kind of a path does it follow? Arc is a piece of a circle. Does a basketball or anything that goes up into the air and falls, does it follow a circular path? What path is it following? A line. Not a line. Not a line. Not a line. Not a hyperbola, but we're getting there. No. Parabola? Parabola. It traces out a parabola when it goes up and moves back down. What is that again? A parabola? Definition of a parabola is not x squared plus x. So anyway, uh, can I show them? Not yet. No. But if we have time, which I think we will, I will show them. Oh, okay. that's turn it um, So a piece of a, of a of the circle's curve is called the arc. And so if we want a piece of the of the circle, right, we're going to divide it by whatever. take that full circumference and we divide it by P, <coughs> right? But we did this already. We, we talked about those pieces of a circle. And what did we wind up coming up with? Fractions, but what, what do we wind up calling these? The kind of way to measure angles? We call them what? Radians, right? You just wind up getting the angle in radians times R. That's what, that's what this is. That's just a way to express the angle, and we call it radius. So if we now call a part of the circle the arc, that's just equal to the angle in radians times the radius. Now here's the weird thing. What letter would you use to represent arc? Why don't you don't use A, you use S. Oh, yeah. No, way area. Yeah, A is area, so we don't use it that again. And then the S, I don't know why it's arc, but it is. It's probably the first letter in some Latin word that means arc. But there it is. So you're going to find the arc, the length of the arc, the arc length. You take the angle theta times the radius R. I tell you what this arc length, this the arc length of this sector, this piece of the circle, and I tell you that this angle is three pi over four, and this radius is seven. And how do you find the arc length? Seven inches. Um, Sorry. Three pi over four. Good. Three pi over four times seven. What? 
So our answer will be in inches, inches because that's if you took a tape measure and measured around this arc, that's if you laid it down flat, a curved, I guess, on top of that arc, that's how much of a tape measure you'd need. You'd use 3 pi over 4 times 7 inches of it, so we could call it 21 pi over 4 inches. Five centimeters or twenty eight point two seven. Do you have to write both for our answer? Either one. Okay. I was looking for mine. That always is like this. I'll make sure. That's 14. It's got to be converted to radians. How do you convert degrees to radians? Don't answer if you know. Let's, um, let's have an aside, a little sidebar. Uh, we know how to convert things to other things, right? Different measures of length into other types of measures of length, like <coughs> if something measures 517 inches, how would I convert that to feet? Multiply by what? Divide by 12, or multiply by what we call an equivalence ratio that takes us from inches, right, cancels out the inches, and takes us to feet. And in order to multiply this by something and not change the value of it, this needs to be equal to 1. It's got to be 1 foot. 1 foot. For 12. For 12 inches. What if I want to do 2 feet for 24 inches? Does that work? 3 feet for 36 inches, right? They're, it's all equivalent. That's why it's called an equivalence ratio. We'll just go ahead and do the... Uh, So 517 times 1 over 12, or 517 divided by 12.
and a quart, so we're going to cancel out pints and go to quarts. And there's two pints to one quart. And there's four quarts in a gallon. So one gallon to four quarts. So we got three times a half times a half times a fourth. So three divided by... idea is cancel out the unit you don't want, leaving you with the unit you do want. We can go through several steps here, but then we do it with these gallons. Unfortunately, we don't have to do that that many times here. So we'll just take our 39 degrees, multiply it by an equivalence ratio that takes us from degrees to radians. So can you think of a simple conversion between this many degrees and the same as this many radians? 180 degrees is the same as two radians, one radian, pi radians, one pi. So that kind of highlights the thing that is a common misunderstanding. Pi is not radians. Pi is not the unit, right? <coughs> pi is a number, 3.14. Units is radians, which we just don't normally write down. That's where they get the unit numbers, I think. Uh, pi is a number. Pi is 3.14. So when I say one radian and I don't say pi, don't assume I mean pi. One radian is one radian. Pi radians is pi radians. So anyway, we're going to cancel out those degrees. So to do that, we're just going to multiply 39 by pi over 180. show you why, because uh, all I've done here is mash some numbers together. <coughs> Can you calculate mash numbers together? Do they need to know that that's a radian? They don't need to know that. When they need to know radians is when you start using things that you actually put angles into, like sine and cosine. Yeah? Can you start it or finish it? So now we have 0 0.6807, 0 0.6807 times 14 B2.
We see a need for going from degrees to radians, right? So if you want to find arc length. We're going to go from radians to, de to degrees by 5 radians. Where would 5 radians be? Where's one radian? It's close to a third of, of a half, so close to 60, right? So this is approximately one, but a little bit less as one radian, possibly less than 60 degrees. Uh, and so two would take us there, and three would get us there, four, about there, five, maybe right there, total estimate here. Uh, so this is approximately five radians. Where, like, how many degrees would you expect that to be? <coughs> how many degrees would you expect this to be close to? 280. 280? How much is this? 270, so maybe 280. Right. Well, we're at 5 radians. We're going to multiply it by, well, something that cancels out radians and takes us 2 degrees. Uh, how many radians? <laughs> <coughs> so many radians is equal to so many degrees? Pi radians is equal to 180 degrees. So the radians cancel out. Pi doesn't cancel out, right? Just the, the, the uh, unit of radians. The only way pi would cancel out is if pi was over there. Um, so 5 times 180 over pi. How do you know you're in degrees? Well, yeah, you can cancel out the radians, but if I just write down a number, how do you know I'm telling you degrees? Well, degrees. So when you see five, just the number five, five what? Radians, because it's not degrees. Yeah? Um, in addition to 18, if they find a definition of a complement is two positive uh, angles are complements if A plus B, if these two angles are equal to 90 degrees. Two positive angles. So if I try to find the complement of 3 pi over 4, well, 3 pi over 4 is right there. We're going to add a positive angle to that and get the 90, so it's 2 pi over 2. Yeah. A positive angle? No. No. They'd have to go negative, right? It just subtracts an angle from that. So, no complement. The supplement is adding to 180. So if you pass 180, you don't have a complement, you don't have a supplement. Last bit of vocab is terminal. Why terminal? What, what part of an angle is terminal? The end. The terminal side is terminal. Um, and what does co mean? Same. Same. I'm a co-worker. Co-operate. Co-exist. Co what? Together. Right? With. Together. 
the same, it can mean the same. Uh, so, same together <laughs> with, right? They have the same terminal side. Their terminal sides are together. One terminal side is with the other terminal side. They have the same terminal side. So, assuming that we always start over here at the right. Are those angles equal? No. They're not equal. Equal would be this, and then if I had gone right back over with blue, those would be equal. Right? Those would be the same for you. But this one is full 360 and then that much more. So they're not equal, but they are co-terminal. They're not equal. They're co-terminal. They have the same terminal side. Okay. How many degrees does this look like? This red one. 300. 300. Okay, so it's 300 degrees. Oops, take it in red. 300 degrees. How did I get, how can I get from the 300 degrees all the way to the end of this blue one? start here and we go back a full rotation. Subtract. Subtract 360, right? So we, we really have gone from here all the way around. So we could take 300 minus 360 equals negative 60. Could I take 300 and add 720 and get a coterminal angle? Thirds. It's two pi over three. Three fourths. Three fourths. Oh, that's good. Three pi over three. Okay. <coughs> if we then want to make a full rotation past that, how much is a full rotation in radians? Four. Eight. Okay. Because a full rotation is how many radians? Well, simplified down. Two pi. Two pi. Is that 2 pi? Yeah. It is. She just gave a common denominator so that we can add them together. 11 pi over 4. So 11 pi over 4 and 3 pi over 4 are, what's the word? Coterminal. We can also go back. Go back by. We're at 3 pi over 4, and we want to go a full rotation. How much is a full rotation in radians? Oh. 2 pi, or 8 pi over 4. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this could be I negative. Think I said that line was eight, Alex. I you thought what was? I thought you said that you had said that line was eight point four or something. <coughs> this is mm -hmm. No, the line was the other time. Oh, this one? Questions about? No, I like it. Do you guys like it? I like it. I like it. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Uh, so we've got, we'll just write down the, the summary. Just radians, right? Who gets that? How about arc length? Yeah, I know. 